Hey guys, Daily Tech here, and today we're going to be setting up the Oculus Rift DK2 to work with the Nolo motion controllers. If you own one or both of these, this is definitely something you need to try out because this combination is awesome. If this is your first time visiting my channel and you enjoy all different types of custom VR, don't forget to subscribe, we've got plenty more like this coming out in the future. As a lot of you might know already, Nolo did release official support for the Oculus Rift DK2. Now I tried to set this up quite some time ago and I had a ton of problems, and reading through the forums there have been other people that have experienced the same sort of problems as well. Apparently it's not quite as easy as they make it look in their own setup guide. So what I've decided to do here is put together a little bit of a setup guide on how to do it, but at the same time provide some troubleshooting steps that I had to go through. Because believe me, I hit just about every single problem you could imagine. Over the last few days, one of my viewers named Bingo93, we've been trying to work together on getting this thing working on my system. Finally, we did get it running, and it is absolutely amazing once it's working. So I'm going to show you a really small clip here on how it performs from a little bit of a different angle than I normally do, just so you can see it on my screen happening in real time. That way you can see for yourself what kind of latency we're looking at while using it with the Rift. So I don't know if you can see my hands versus how they are on the screen, but as far as these things go, these are, like you can twist them and they all look really good, move them around and it, it, it really feels like it's on the money. I mean, as far as latency goes, there's a tiny, tiny little bit, but um, I don't feel like it's really gonna going to kill me too much. So that's basically how it runs. So if you do want to give it a shot just based on the regular setup guide, I put a link to Nolo's video in my description below. But if you do run into a couple problems during that setup, be sure to check this video out because I do plenty of troubleshooting to get this thing working. Now keep in mind, once everything is all set up and ready to go, there are a few trade-offs that you do need to worry about. From my understanding, Revive doesn't work very well with this and the head tracking is not quite as precise as you would get with the normal camera from the DK2. But those problems seem quite pale compared to the two massive bonuses you get, motion controllers and the DK2 actually becomes 360 degrees. And the first thing we're going to do is download the software we need to get running. So the HDK installer, we need to get that first, so we'll download that. And then also we're going to need the Nolo software as well. So we're going to need to download this entire others folder. So click on that, clone download, and then download zip. Once that starts downloading, we're going to go back to the main. And then we're going to grab Nolo driver for Windows. And this is actually to get things running. Download that zip as well. And now the three are downloaded, we're going to run the HDK installer first. And we're just going to install everything with defaults here. Now as that finishes up, I'm going to start checking out the downloads we have. So we've got the Nolo driver. And this is a quick and easy install, never really causes any problems getting this installed. So we'll just extract that and then run the driver. And now that the HDK software is done, we'll just hit finish there. The Nolo driver is installed as well. So we can get rid of that off the desktop. And then this is the part where we're going to get Nolo and the DK2 working with the OSVR software. So all you need in here is the Nolo software and if you just go into where you find OSVR Oculus you can just take this folder put that on your desktop and then close that down. And now we can start copying all the files over. Now this part's the exact same as how Nolo has it on their official guide so I'm just gonna run through it somewhat quickly and if you have any problems check out their guide. So I'm going to open up the HDK software suite, put that over here, and then I'm going to open up the folder where we need to pull everything from. So the first place you want to go into is the OSVR core, into the bin folder where you have all the JSON files, 
And we need to add these three JSONs here over into this folder. It's going to ask if you want to replace. Just hit replace and I'll add the new ones. Then you scroll back up, go to your OSVR plugins, and in here you want to take this DLL and then copy that over. Now you can open up the OSVR Steam VR driver folder and we're going to put the rest of that stuff in the OSVR Steam VR uh, folder here. So I want to, sorry, I'm going to go back to OSVR, bin, Win64. Same thing, copy all the files over. They mention in their guide it's just the DLLs, but uh, copying over all the files is actually what you need. So just replace those as well. Great. And the only thing we have left in this folder now on the desktop is our SteamVR.VR settings file. So we can go over to our Steam in, our Steam and Steam VR install. And then config folder. And in here, if you already have a setup going that's uh, with something else or you've used this for some other reason in the past, you might want to make a copy of this right away. And then just paste it into the same folder again and it'll automatically call it copy. And that way if you ever need to revert back, it'll always be there for you. And now you can actually, you can just copy over the old one or delete it and just copy this new one in. And this will be all the settings that you need for this to run properly. Now one thing I did try was to get it merged into my previous one here for my PS Move uh, setup. However, it, it didn't work at all. Um, it was putting the screen in the wrong window. So uh, we're just going to leave that as is. And if you want to switch back and forth, you can always do that. So now that everything's copied over, I'm going to show you the general idea of what you're looking for. Now if you open up your display settings, you should see in here your, your Oculus Rift. Now mine's plugged in at the moment, but it's not showing up. Um, this is my main display here, as you can see right here. And then I have a secondary display, just a little 1080 screen there. Um, and this and this reminds me too, there's something else that we do need to add. And it's something that I did have to do to get mine working properly. If your screen is not a 1080p screen as your main monitor, um, we're going to go back into the HDK uh, folder. And then we have in the core bin. And this is where we put the uh, JSON files previously. And you're going to want to open up the Render Manager uh, Extended Landscape. And edit that in you know, Notepad++ or whatever, whatever have you. And you can see in this spot right here where it says change this to put the window into your HMD display. Now what this is doing is, is it's telling where the H your uh, DK2 is going to be sitting in relation to your main display. So in here it's going to be it's taking it from the top left corner so you're going to have to say how far to the right and then how far up and down it's going to be now what we're going to do is we're going to put it right aligned at the top so that's why the y value here is going to be zero because it's right dead even with it and as far as the x position is how far to the right you have to put how far it is over so you have to put the width in here so i got a 3840 and i'll put that in here instead instead of 1080 once that's in you can save this and then you can close that off and that should take care of that that might just solve some issues down the road now that that's all finished you should be able to go down to your OSVR server and then just launch your custom as you normally would get that started up and We'll check our display settings, and like I said, we want to get that monitor showing up on the right, which is actually the DK2. So we'll go down here and go extended, as we're supposed to do. Now the issue, it's not showing up. Now here's the problem that I had to solve here, and this was actually help again from Big O, was going into the device manager you'll notice that the monitor is showing up as a Rift DK2, which is not good. So this is how it's showing up as an extended monitor. So if you are going to use this as a normal, normal Oculus Rift with the regular Oculus software, you're doing it in direct mode. So doing this is absolutely okay. 
So you want to right click on it and select uninstall device and then click on delete driver software for this device. Now that we've deleted out of the device manager, we do need to give the computer a restart. All right, now that the computer's restarted, the next thing we're going to have to do is make sure we stop the OVR service. To do that, you're going to need to start a command prompt with elevated privileges. So if you want to open up start and then go CMD, right click on that and select run as administrator. In here, what you'll need to type is net stop OVR service. And that's going to stop all of the Oculus VR services. Once that's done, you can just close that off. Now I've scripted some of this with Auto Hotkey that I'm going to go over a little bit later, but we're just going to get the thing up and running now so you can see how it works. So now we're going to open up Device Manager again just to make sure that it's showing up how we want. And now you'll see that it's showing up as a generic PNP monitor. That's what we're looking for. So we'll start up the OVR service now, or sorry, o OSVR service. I wish they weren't named so close together. <laughs> And we'll also open up our display settings, just so we can see everything happening all at once here. So what we're looking for, like we said before, is that third display here for the DK2. So if we go down to the OS VR server, and the server is running, we want to click now Enable Extend Mode. Sometimes you do have to unplug the HDMI from the headset and plug it back in, but that will get it going now. And from this point forward, it should always show up as an extended display. It just needs to be registered that way once. So as you see, we have the third display up now, which is the Oculus Rift. And if you look in your headset, you should see your desktop there as well. Now that's the tough part. That's the hard part to get everything up and running. The rest of it's quite easy. Now, like I mentioned before, I did script all of this, and I'll show you what I mean. I'll close this stuff off here. And I... So I've made these four different scripts for four different things that I want to do depending on what I have set up here. So I have my PS Move with DK2, NOLA with DK2, uh, RiftCat uh, with PS Move, and then RiftCat with NOLO. And uh, to give you a little bit of an idea of what those scripts involve, here's the all the different scripts that I have here. And I just keep it all inside of my VR folder. Or, uh, I keep it all inside my VR files folder here. Let's see the one specific for this video, which is NOLO and DK2. So for this setup with the NOLO and DK2, first thing I have is it run that um, to stop the OS OVR service. And then next thing it does is it copies over my steamvr.vr settings file. What I've done here is I've also set up in this folder two different profiles for my steamvr.vr settings file. Depending on which one I run and which one I want to run, it's going to copy the correct one over into the other folder and then rename it correctly. And that's what this second half is here. So in this example, it's going to take my nolo, dot, my nolo dk2.vr settings file and then it's going to copy it over to my steam config folder and rename it as steamvr.vr settings and this one is so that it overwrites the previous one. And of course we have it start up the uh, HDK tray app and then it starts up the NOLA drivers. And then that way all you need to, all you should have to do is you should just have to right click on this. Maybe you might have to click on extended mode or not. It depends on how things work out. But then just start up Steam VR. If you are interested in these icons that I've made, I'm put them in a zip folder in the description that you can download. Feel free to use them however you want. If you want to use them, the way to do it is that you go to your scripts that you've created and then just make a shortcut of each one of these. And then that way the shortcut on the desktop, you can select your own icon for. So I'll just right click on one for example and I'll go to properties. And then you can just change icon. But remember, you can't do that to the EXE file. You have to do it to just a shortcut for it. And here, you just browse to wherever the icon is. Now in order for this to run properly and start and stop the OVR service without any kind of error, you need to go to the Advanced tab and then make sure you check this Run as Administrator. Once you click OK, hit Apply, and now it should be fine. It's going to run it with elevated privileges. 
Well, that was an absolute nightmare to get installed, but it's done and it's working great. So just remember, all you need to do from this point here is just start the NOLO software to get the controllers working, run the OSVR server, then start SteamVR. Everything should work almost every time afterwards. Hopefully this rough walkthrough helped you out a little bit and gave you a few ideas on how you can get your system up and running. Because believe me, once they're all ironed out, it works super well and you're going to thank yourself for putting in the time. Now yes, there is that weird quirk with the headset connecting and disconnecting over and over again, but don't forget just to turn the headset off and that should make it stop. Well guys, thanks for watching and don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.